let's look at entropy another way. Suppose we have two gas molecules, colored here purple and blue, and they are within a vessel that has uh, two chambers on it that have a stopcock in the middle preventing them from moving to the other side. Once we open that stopcock, if we were to just take a snapshot at various stages in time, we have four options that come out. Right? Once it's opened and we're taking snapshots, we'll see that we have the option of them both being on the left side of the device. We could have the blue one being on the left, the purple on the right. We could have the opposite of that, purple on the left, blue on the right, or both of them on the right. And the probability for any of these particular states can be calculated, right? If we were to do that, if we were to calculate, well, what's the probability of both molecules being on the right side of this particular uh, flask? Well, we would say, okay, it's going to be, whoops. If we want them on the same side of the flask, we really have a probability of two or half, right? They could both be on the left or on the right. And if we remember probability, it's, it's all about the states, right? And so we have two options. We have two uh, molecules in here, right? And they each have their own probabilities. We have a one-fourth chance of getting them to be on the same side, of, uh, or on the, the left side, we'll say. They each have a one-half chance of being on the left side of our flask, and there are two of them. So the probability for that is one-fourth. If we have three molecules and we want them to all be on the same side, that would be one eighth. And if we have a mole of gas, it's about zero then, right? One half raised to the 20, 10 to the 23rd power. Uh, extremely small number. So we see that the probability for uh, something to be organized decreases with the number of uh, kind of options available, right? So as we kept adding more and more molecules, the probability of them all being on the same side of the class is very, very, very small. It gets smaller and smaller as we do that. And that's the idea here, is that we are increasing the number of options. With more options, the chance for something organized decreases. Disorder or entropy increases. And this right now is only in terms of position, right? Their location. If we add in a black particle, we now have to consider, okay, well, is the black particle going to be uh, you know, on which side. And now we've added way more um, options to the system. And so, again, that probability for it to be what we are looking for, our organization, having them all together, uh, is very, very low uh, the more we add to the system. So the more options you have, the more the ent entropy increases. And that's, again, only in terms of position. But we also have kinetic energy, right? We know that at a given temperature, different molecules will have um, the, the abundance of molecules and temperature can be plotted, right, as a, as a distribution. We see, okay, yes, at a given temperature, we have a certain number of molecules that have a particular amount of kinetic energy, uh, right? So, um, I'm sorry, this is kinetic energy at a given temperature, at T1. If we increase the temperature, remember what we do is we end up shifting that graph to the right. T2 is greater than T1. So we also see that if we increase the thermal energy, we have more possibilities of different kinetic energies for our molecules. So that's more options as well. 
And so we see that with heat, with more molecules, delta S increases. With more temperature, delta S increases. And so we can essentially say that the entropy is related to how many states are available to us. Um, and states as in, okay, I can have my three gas particles on the left side of that reaction flask, and I want all of them to have a kinetic energy of however many uh, joules, right? Um, but that's not reality. We have statistics here. We have probabilities that we need to take into play. And so the more molecules we have and the more our temperature is, uh, we'll have more and more options available to us. And as we know, those options uh, will allow us to uh, do more things. And so the universe likes that. It likes having options. Right? So if you take that in context of that building, remember that we talked about, you know, once you have your building there, you don't really have more options. You can't say, I'm going to take this window and move it over here. Once the building is done and it's organized and orderly, you don't have the options. You have very low entropy in that system. But once it's destroyed, you can take a brick from one part of the pile and move it to another one very easily. You have a lot of options in a very chaotic, disordered system. And so that's the idea here. Um, Boltzmann, who was a scientist who dedicated his life to this, um, interestingly enough, uh, well, he, he killed himself. Um, and I remember my, my statistical thermodynamics textbook was, uh, you know, like anybody who has dedicated their lives to studying statistical mechanics has killed themselves. And then the book starts, now it's our turn to study statistical mechanics. It's quite horrifying, isn't it? Um, but uh, that aside, enough of the kind of factoid business there, uh, he came up with this equation. He's the, also the one who invented these distributions, by the way, Boltzmann. That uh, we can relate delta S to the number of states within the system. This is not an equation we're going to necessarily worry about calculating anything with. But uh, it, it, it relates the number of states available, or microstates, we can say. And as we see with temperature and molecules, that tends to get very large. So it's still a, 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 a constant. And then we have uh, Boltzmann's constant, K, which is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23rd oops, joules per Kelvin. That's the Boltzmann constant. We will use that uh, later on uh, in your chemistry uh, career here. Uh, that's the Boltzmann constant. So, um, and, uh, so this equation we're not going to really use, but suffice it to say, the equation describes how we can relate entropy to the number of states available to us. And that is not something we're going to be able to count. You know, for for our gas thing, yes, we had four different states with only two molecules. Small system. Put in a mole, you have six times ten to the twenty-third states, and that's only in terms of location. We also have the entire distribution of temperature to worry about. So the states can become extremely large numbers, um, and that's why they're in a logarithm there. So uh, we're not going to worry about that too much. All right, but that's just an equation we get. Um, and so, in our next video, we'll take a look at how to predict the entropy of a system based on kind of macroscopic observations.